If you've been keeping up with my recent series of videos on conic sections, you'll be familiar with the standard equation for the hyperbola x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. And you should be familiar with all of the features associated with this equation. Let's list them all once again for good measure. So this is a hyperbola that is centered about the origin. It has its vertices located at positive and negative a, comma, 0 on the x-axis. It has its focal points located at AE, positive and negative AE, comma, 0, again on the x-axis. The directrices are vertical lines with the equations x equals positive and negative A over E. And the asymptotes are diagonal lines with the equation y equals positive and negative B divided by A times x. And we note that E is the eccentricity. Now, what about the equation of a hyperbola with its center, not at the origin, but at the point PQ? Well, the equation is slightly modified from the standard form, where we have to incorporate the coordinates of the new center point within the squared terms. So the x squared term becomes x minus p all squared. So the variable x minus the x-coordinate of the center point, all squared, over a squared. And the y squared term becomes the variable y minus q, the y-coordinate of the center point, all squared, over b squared. Now for shorthand, we can call this x minus p, capital X, and the y minus q term, capital Y. And the only modification we need to make to these features is to translate them or offset them by the coordinates of the center point PQ. So the center point is obviously located at PQ. The vertices are located at positive and negative A plus P comma Q. So the vertices are still at a distance of A either to the left or the right of the center point. The same applies to the focal points where they are still located at positive and negative AE to the either side of the center point. For the directrix, because these are infinitely long vertical lines, we don't need to consider the Y coordinate. So these are simply offset by P. And the asymptotes, well, Y becomes capital Y and the X becomes capital X. So the equation is y minus q equals positive and negative b on a by x minus p. And if we make y the subject, we get y equals q plus or minus b on a by x minus p. All right, so with all this, let's do an example. Sketch the graph of the equation 9x squared minus y squared plus 18x minus 4y minus 4 equals 0. Okay, so let's first group the x terms together and factor out a 9 from those. So we have 9 outside of x squared plus 2x to make up the 9x squared and the 18x. And with the rest of the terms, I can group these together as well and take out the negative in front. So I have negative or negative 1 outside of y squared minus 4y. So taking out a negative from the positive 4y gives a negative 4y. And this minus 4 becomes a positive 4 if I take a negative out from that one. And this all equals 0. Now this trailing term here, I can write this as a perfect square. So I'm completing the square. I can write this as y minus 2 all squared. So you can satisfy yourself that this expands to y squared minus 4y plus 4. This minus gets copied down. Now the front parentheses, in order to do the same thing, what I need is to add a 1 to this term here. So I can write x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now if I add a 1, I need to subtract a 1. So in effect, I'm adding by 0, so plus 1, minus 1 equals 0. And that's to maintain equivalency between this term and this term above. The 9 comes down as well. Now x squared plus 2x plus 1, this can be written as a perfect square of 
x plus 1 all squared. This minus 1 that's left is copied down and we multiply this whole thing by the 9, so the 9 is copied down as well. And the rest of this, let's copy that down, so we have 9 outside of x plus 1 all squared minus 1 minus y minus 2 all squared equals 0. So expanding the 9 into these terms, I have 9 by x plus 1 all squared minus 9 minus y minus 2 all squared equals 0. We can take this minus 9 to the other side. So on the right hand side it becomes a positive 9. And then dividing all of the terms on both the left and right by 9, we have x plus 1 all squared on 1 minus y minus 2 all squared on 9 is equal to 1. The term 1 here is equal to 1 squared and the factor of 9 here is equal to 3 squared. So I almost have the equation in the correct form. One more thing I'm going to change is instead of writing x plus 1, I'll write this as x minus negative 1 all squared. So this is the equation of a hyperbola that has its center point pq at negative 1 comma 2. We have the term a equals 1 and b equals 3. So the vertices are one unit either side of the center point and the conjugate axis is formed by the line that joins the points 3 above and below the center point. Now the relationship a times the eccentricity squared equals b squared plus a squared is still true for this hyperbola. So we can calculate this as b squared equals 9 plus a squared equals 1 equals 10. So ae equals the square root of 10 and with a being equal to 1 the eccentricity is equal to the square root of 10 which evaluates approximately to 3.16 and with the distance ae also equal to 3.16 we have the focal points at 3.16 units either side of the center point. For the directrices these are at a distance a over e either side of the center point so we have 1 divided by root 10, which is equal to approximately 0 0.316. And as for the asymptotes, we'll construct these from the vertices and the conjugate axis. Alright, so we have the center point located at negative 1, 2. The vertices are located one unit either side of the center point. We call them the points capital A on the right and A prime on the left. Three units above. And below the center point, we have the points B and B prime. And this forms the conjugate axis. And from this, we can form the auxiliary rectangle. And the auxiliary rectangle will help us in forming the asymptotes. Now, 0 0.316 either side of the center point. So it's about one third of a unit either side of the center point. We have the vertical lines that form the directrices, D and D prime, and we can form diagonals from corner to corner and extend it beyond the auxiliary rectangle to form the asymptotes. And before we forget about the focal points, let's put these in as well. These are 3.16 units. 1, 2, 3.16 units either side of the center point. And with all of these features in place, we can sketch the hyperbola opening up from the vertices. Okay, so that is a sketch of the equation 9x squared minus y squared plus 18x plus 4x minus 4 equals 0. And that'll do it for this video. If you found this useful, please give me a thumbs up and please share it with others. If you have any questions, please use the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos that may help you with your homework or assignments. Until next time, best of luck with your studies.